Hi, my name is Mike Garcia. I'm the owner of Enviroscape Landscape, a local landscape contracting firm here in Redondo Beach, California. What we're doing here today is we're adding a huge component to an already sustainable landscape. We're turning a swimming pool into a rainwater harvesting system. And what that is, it's a, uh, we're filling in the pool with boxes, empty boxes. They look like milk crates, but they're called uh, rainwater harvesting tanks. And we're uh, installing many, many, many of those. And the idea is to save rainwater, capture it, and then reuse it as irrigation water in the hot summer months. So the way that this was built is they, there's the, uh, the structure that Mike put in years ago, and then he had an underlayment, which is this white piece here, and that protects it from any intrusions coming in. Once we got the, line, the liner in there and cleaned out and everything, we put about six inches of sand in the bottom. They uh, leveled it out. They used water to get it compacted. They went in with a two by four and leveled it really good with rakes. And then they wrapped, they, they laid the geotextile fabric in layers with six inch overlaps so that uh, when they start putting the tanks in, um, you don't need to seal it up or anything. It'll all hold. They put the tanks in. We got them in nice and snug. Now we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna pull the uh, fabric up over it. We've pulled the fabric over. We've pulled the liner back over the top and laid sand on top. And you want to make sure that you get sand touching any anytime you've got the geotextile fabric in contact with the soil. You'll want to put sand down first. And that'll maintain the integrity of the geotextile fabric, allowing it to uh, stay open instead of closing up maybe with a silt. They can put the gravel, anything that's not sharp, you're going to want a rounded gravel if you use it, uh, beach sand or gravel, and compact it again. They'll, they'll go up at a minimum of 12 inches before they start compacting with the vibrator plate, right? And then they'll bring in another uh, six to eight inches to get it to the grade that they want it to be at. And then the contractor will come in next week with rebar and he'll lay the patio down on top of that. So we're capturing all the water that's coming off the roof and going into the rainwater harvesting system. We're pumping it out. This pump right here is an on-demand. Once it's set up and once there's water in the system, it automatically charges the irrigation. Nothing else has to be done. Every day, 1.5 million, excuse me, 1.5 billion with a B gallons of water is imported from other areas of the United States into Southern California. The drought has, all over the, uh, the central western United States has crippled the ability of the water companies to deliver enough water. Whatever you do to save water is going to save you money because prices on water are escalating out of control. Southern California needs to change its relationship with water and this is one way to change that relationship. You know something like this, um, it's practical, but it's not practical for everybody, so we, I don't think there's any one silver bullet. There's a lot of demand, either from municipalities or from consumers themselves. They really want to be sustainable within their own space, and that's a big part of what Mike's done here. He's capturing water and reusing it all on his own space. But every square inch of water that falls on Mike's roof, his house, his garage, and this actual patio we're going to pour on top of it, which is an, addi an additional 200 square feet, is going to be harvested so we go and irrigate our plants with it throughout the year. Uh, right now we're hoping maybe 11 months out of the year, 10 months, is a, and they're saying that's a safe estimate. It's almost like it's going to be something that everyone starts doing because the value of the water is so important. Up until recently, and probably in some areas, the city didn't want you to keep water on your property. You know, they felt that the responsible thing is was to send it out to the ocean and send it to the rivers, and, and now they're realizing how crazy that is. There's just a tremendous amount of water that's being wasted that put, people don't realize, and if you used all these new techniques and harvest the water, then uh, it would save them thousands and thousands of gallons of water. And more than anything, more than artificial turf or any other thing, this seems like one of the number one things that people can do that's very you know, cost effective, in the soil, out of sight, out of mind, you don't see it at all, and it's getting huge results. If each resident takes responsibility 
to you know keep their uh, landscape beautiful through our natural process of rainwater, um, it's going to have huge uh, positive effects in the future. You're actually capturing something that's free out of the sky and reusing it, which doesn't cost you anything. That's so actually going to save you money in the long run. And the best thing, you're helping the environment. On my own house, it was built five years ago. We have all the gutters going into a sump pump going out into the street. It makes me sick. I want to redo the whole entire thing. You can harvest all your water that lands on the driveway. That, that is huge compared to anything else. How many, you know, hundreds, not thousands of gallons could be captured times every household in Los Angeles County of eight million people? I mean, do the math, it's a no-brainer. No, I really do like the ET base controllers and all the nozzles and all the savings that they do, but it's, they're gonna be nothing compared to this savings. If residents and the rest of the community can develop ideas like this and start implementing them in their own homes, they would save all that water, reduce the runoff, and we'd really be on our way to becoming a sustainable community. I just experimented with something at my own house. I built a small dry creek bed in my backyard and I used a number of these barrels. It was very simple. I did it all myself and I did it in a day. But there's other applications, you know, these big units on top of air, you know, the big air conditioning units on top of, you know, high rise buildings, you know, the condensation coming off there, you know, really adds up and be captured and we could build a system for that. that that's my belief from the commercial end of things. I think it'd be a great uh, application for all schools throughout America, especially here in the West where we're in huge droughts. There's lots of land they could put systems like this in, so it would be great. Incredible. I think this will be the, definitely the future of using irrigation. Having examples of projects like this where they're developing rainwater harvesting systems will help people realize that they can take an active step towards saving water. They won't have to use potable water to irrigate their landscapes, irrigate their backyards. And they'll be able to conserve water and hopefully save some money in the long run as they put in a system that's efficient and sustainable. Wow, we're doing our part to help the world.